they say once a Marine, always a Marine. And uh, the Corps is a family. I'm Sonia Morton Firth, your host for these two days of memories, comradeship and esprit de corps. So these events must bring so much to you um, and, and the charity must play a great part in that. Well, I think we're all proud to be part of the family and uh, really to um, try and uphold the tradition by giving a little bit of our time. Even though now we've left the Corps, it is still a big part of our life. Well, certainly today, very emotional. Um, there's um, one of my oppos here today who's, who's, uh, who's unveiled the um, Afghan stone, um, which we, because I'm Portsmouth Branch RMA, so we've got the gardening party and we're getting the gardens up together. And uh, today's quite a big day for Portsmouth Royal Marines Association, indeed for the, whole RMA uh, because of the, the, the parade but also the unveiling of the two stones bringing it up to date uh, for Iraq and um, Afghan and uh, George and Liz um, lost their son there Corporal uh, Dave O'Connor and so it was quite emotional. It's a very very big family um, as you can imagine joining 1960 I still have friends in the Royal Marines. What is it about the course family that keep you all together um, coming back to events like well, like today. You probably heard the, the phrase once a marine always a marine and it never never falters once you've become a, a green berry holder you're always a green berry holder wherever you go. Now, I found um, the service that was just performed very moving today I've known people that are not here now. Um, we use the phrase, they cross the bar. Well, there's been a lot of people that have crossed the bar for one reason or another, and that's either in conflict or from injury or from an illness that they've got during their service time. What messages do you think we can learn from the Falklands War? What we achieved down there and the manner in which we achieved it, 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 it established a legacy for the young people as an example of this is what can be achieved in you know real adversity when you know everything's going against you because it, it was a close run thing you know and the the reason why we ended up winning in the way that we did was because of our training not only the Royal Marines but the British Army and the Navy uh, served the country well and restored the Falkland Islanders their home and uh, we could always be proud of that I think the, the, the biggest message is that, you know, we remember, you know, we remember the sacrifices that people went down there and, and, and unfortunately, you know, people didn't return. And I think it's, it's very important for us to remember um, that aspect of it, you know, the, the sacrifices that people do to this day. There. So can you tell me your name? It's Richie Baronia, yeah? all right. I'm half Italian and uh, I joined the Corps after watching the Falklands on Italian telly. Um, I was only 13. Um, so when we moved over here in 1983, uh, I joined the Corps in 1988. This morning we went out for a ride. We met up by the, by the Yompa, the Bianca, all of us. Um, and we did 60 miles around the local area. Um, we went on the memorial, uh, they planted uh, 255 trees on top of Paul Sound Hill, um, which is uh, of all the people that have lost their lives in, in, the, in the Falklands. So we paid our respects there and we did a couple of minutes silence and, uh, and then come down here for the service. And Richard, what do you do for the RMA, the Royal Marines Charity? Well, apart from playing in this football game today, uh, I played in the cricket game yesterday against the Royal Navy and um, we, we do our piece for the cause, don't we? Thank you so much. And well, next time you're going to win, I'm sure, definitely. No, don't you worry, we will. <laughs> Russ, Di, tell me, you're all dressed in leathers. Can you tell me a little bit more about why and what you've just been up to? 
Uh, we're, we're part of the RMA with the riders branch. Uh, we all ride motorbikes. Um, we don't wear blazers. This is our blazer, so we wear motorbike cuts. It's all about remembering those who didn't make it back. Uh, it can be a bit melancholy. Uh, we've had a lot of reunions. We had one last week in, in Plymouth. Uh, and reigniting friendships and people that we've not seen for a very long time. And it was a fantastic weekend, you know, and there had been lots of it going on. So it's, it's a continuation of remembrance uh, in a positive way, not in a melancholy way. And how important has the RMA, uh, the Royal Marines charity, been to you? Everything, because um, it gives you, you know, like, the, like we had just then, a service, all right? Um, standing into attention, cycling shoes are not, not the easiest the thing, especially when you're marching uh, on grass. <laughs> Um, but it's it's you got like a, a point a point of contact, and and also you're able to wear your you know the Royal Marines colours, um, and uh, it, like I got me uh, my poppy my Jubilee poppy from last week. You're both now members of, of the Royal Marines um, charity. Can you tell me how that's helped um, you now? Now you're no longer serving. Um, I've got a saying. Um, I don't miss the circus, I miss the clowns, and we get <laughs> yeah. all the clowns are in the, uh, in, in the uh, RMA riders branch, so uh, it, it, you know, it's great. I'm Catherine, um, and I'm a volunteer for the charity, and I do quite a bit of fundraising for them. What sort of fundraising? Can you give me some examples of what you do? Uh, so last year I ran seven marathons in seven countries in seven days. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's the biggest thing. Um, I've done some other running events. I've done a skydive and a wing walk. Yeah. So. And what's your connection to the Royal Marines? I used to be in the Royal Marines band. Wow. How long were you in the band, and when did you finish serving? Uh, I was in for nearly ten years. I left in two thousand and six. Anita, can you tell me a little more about your background? Because I believe it's not just Phil that you know in the Royal Marines. Yeah, so my great granddad, my granddad, my dad, my husband, Phil, um, and my son are all former and Royal Marines. Wow, that must be some sort of a record. Uh, for me, um, I think because it's a family and, you know, it's a family unit. So, and there's not many within the Royal Marines, so that family unit is really unique. What does it mean being part of the community still? Oh, it, it, it's vital to me uh, and to the guys who play and are involved, etc. I mean, it's quite, it's, it's quite difficult transitioning through from your military career into Civvy Street, irrespective of what you go out to, what job you go into, etc. But that change in lifestyle and culture, um, I think, takes a lot of uh, adjustments. Uh, and so being involved with the football team supports that and helps the transition. I love being part of this community. We're such a big family, and I'm bringing up my boys into a great community and great family. So I'm, I'm just, I love it so much. It's great. I served in from 1991 to 2000, and I was a King's Badgeman. And I was very proud of that, and I think it's one of the most incredible organisations in the, in the world. And the core is something, the reason it's been around for so long is it teaches people about what's happened and how we administer what goes on next. And that's a really important factor in life. And I think that's a, that's a semblance for everybody. Stephen, I think that's really good advice. Thank you so much nice for your words. You. Thank you. <laughs> the yomp, that 100 mile yomp was the hardest thing I've ever done. And um, yeah, it was very painful. But I think uh, what happened was um, it taught me that I don't give up and I think that's a really great um, thing about I think even the Royal Marines ethos is that um, yeah that they just keep going uh, no matter how difficult things are. Today Portsmouth honours the veterans by granting them freedom of the city. The Lord Mayor will also confirm the twinning of Portsmouth with the Falkland Islands. It is therefore entirely fitting that Portsmouth should twin with the Falkland Islands in order to strengthen our long-standing relationship.
Jonathan, we've just come to the end of what has been an absolutely amazing and memorable event. Can you give me your thoughts on the past few days? It's been fabulous on three fronts. And first of all, the Falklands War is such a special anniversary for the Royal Marines uh, with uh, 27 Royal Marines to remember who didn't come back from there. So to pay them the due honour and respect was first and foremost the most important thing. Secondly, it was brilliant to be able to receive the freedom of the city of Portsmouth. We're so closely connected with this great city which supported uh, in the Second World War as well as in the Falklands War. Um, Royal Marines going out to serve the country. And thirdly, it's been brilliant to join together with the Royal Naval Association. So often the uh, Marines and, and the Navy are like rivals with each other and so it was great to get together socially and to spend some time together. And it's been wonderful to welcome so many of the different branches of the association together over the weekend to the bikers, the, the, uh, uh, the cyclists, um, to get the Portsmouth branch and members of other branches too and to really celebrate um, post-Covid a chance to come back together again and look forward. The core history, I mean the, the core family is so important and the community spirit that I felt over the past um, couple of days spending some time with them has, has really been heartwarming. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the RMA and what benefits it brings? So we now um, have 20,000 members in the RMA um, and you know, still going up. Um, it's free to join so it doesn't cost you anything. The offers um, I look at it as, a, as an assurance policy so that as soon as you become a member of the RMA or a Royal Marine um, you can be looked after from the day you join until the day you pass away um, and everything in between, mental health support, um, financial support if you fall on hard times. So it's, it's a whole family kind of concept that we have um, and it's great to be part of this fabulous family. As you know I'm not a Royal Marine. Uh, but I haven't had one jibe this weekend um, and what that proves to me is that uh, the, the core family is very open and very welcoming and, um, and it's, it's got porous, uh, porous uh, boundaries so people are welcomed in all the time and what we want to do is, is to widen the reach of the core family so that we can both celebrate the Royal Marines and the people that are part of the Royal Marines family but also so that we can just enjoy life enjoy it to the full because you never know what tomorrow brings. It's an opportunity for us all really to commemorate those that we've lost but also in a way celebrate our achievements 40 years ago um, because it was a, um, you know, a really significant um, event in our history and particularly the Royal Marines so it means a lot to be here.